Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. In previous episodes, I've shown you several ways to zoom, crop, and create picture in picture effects in PowerDirector. Today, I'll show you my favorite method for creating picture in picture videos using PowerDirector's PIP Designer. You're about to see that PowerDirector is a remarkably powerful program and it's priced at a fraction of what other programs cost. If you want to buy PowerDirector or just try out their free demo, please use the link in the description below. If you do, CyberLink will contribute to this channel at no extra cost to you. If you appreciate the education you get from these tutorials, please support the channel by purchasing through this link. Now, let's get started with Picture in Picture Designer. In this tutorial, I'm going to create a video collage of scenes from the Texas State Fair, displaying several clips simultaneously using the PIP Designer. I have already added several clips from the State Fair of Texas on the timeline. The first clip is actually a photograph of Big Tex, an icon of the State Fair. We'll display this as a background and put all the video clips on top of it. By the way, we could use a video clip just as easily as a photo for this purpose. Next is a clip of a girl walking a pig along the sidewalk, and we'll put it on the lower left corner of the image for our PIP collage. I'll drag this clip down to the second track of the timeline. You can see the video clip is covering up the big text photo. That means the display is set to work from the top down. On the timeline, you can see the clip runs longer than the photo of big text. Let's drag big text out so the shot is as long as the clip. I'm using PowerDirector 18 for this tutorial so I can set it so the background track would be on the bottom and you would add tracks on top of that. You can change that by clicking Edit Preferences. Then clicking on the Edit menu and click Reverse Timeline Track Order. Now you can see the rows have swapped places and the background track is on the bottom. Personally, I like this view better. It's a more logical way to order the tracks in my opinion. However, you can't do this in PowerDirector 17. 17 always displays from the top down. This tutorial works for users of PowerDirector 17 as well as 18, so I'm going to put it back the way I had it originally. Now we're back to the first layout and we can work with this second clip. Before I start with the PIP, let's deal with the audio on these video clips. Ultimately, I'll be playing all the clips simultaneously and I don't need a jumble of mixed audio blaring away when I do it. I can deselect the audio track for each track as I build the collage, but why bother? I don't need the audio, so let's just get rid of it. Click on the clip, then right click, and choose Unlink Video and Audio. Now I'll click off of the clip to deselect it, then click on the audio portion of the clip, now only the audio is selected. I can drag it around separately from the video portion if I want. In this case, I just want to delete it. I'll do that for the rest of the clips now. That's better. No unnecessary audio in our video clips. Let's get to setting up PIP. If you watched my previous episodes, you know I can make this clip a PIP display in the preview screen. Let's change our view to 75% so we have more room. Now we can resize this clip simply by clicking on it in the timeline, then in the preview window, dragging the white square in the upper right corner down. You can now see the picture in picture display. That's a simple PIP effect, but I want more options. Let's undo that with a Control Z. Now let's use the PIP Designer to accomplish this, which will give us some additional options to play with. Click on the clip to select it, then choose Designer, PIP Designer. Now we're in the PIP Designer. Along the left we have several settings we can apply to the clip in the Properties tab. Above that are two tab options, Properties and Motion. By default, Properties is selected. To the right we have a preview, 
and beneath that is the timeline. In this tutorial, we'll tinker with all of these sections of the PIP Designer. By the way, the screen you're seeing is PowerDirector 18. PowerDirector 17 is organized a little differently, but the options are largely the same. First, we can resize the clip by clicking the white box in the upper right corner and dragging it down as we did before. We can also resize it by changing the scale in the menu to the left. 1.000 means it's displayed at full size. We can resize this very specifically by entering a decimal to represent a percentage of the screen size. I want to make these pretty small, so let's enter 0.335. When I click on the next box, it automatically updates to 0.335 because we have the box checked for maintain aspect ratio. If we didn't check that box, we could change the width and height separately, which would distort the image. In some cases you want to do that, but not in this case, so we'll keep it checked. Now we have the clip resized. By the way, as we go through the rest of the settings, you'll see there is often a choice of dragging a slider or entering a specific number, just like you saw with scale. We've changed the size of the clip. We can also adjust the location of the clip on screen from this properties menu. You have boxes for x-axis, which goes from left to right, and y-axis, which goes from top to bottom. If I increase the number for the x-axis, you can see the clip moves to the right on the screen. If I decrease the y-axis, the vertical axis, the clip moves up on the screen. The ease in and ease out boxes are disabled because we don't have any motion set up. I'll explain those boxes in a couple minutes. So let's look what else we can do with this clip in the PIP Designer's left menu. Opacity is pretty simple. As you move the slider left, you decrease the opacity or increase the transparency. I'll leave mine at 100%. Rotation allows you to rotate the clip from 0 to 359.99 degrees. We don't have any motion set up on this clip, so rotation is disabled. Ease in and ease out boxes are also disabled. The next choice in the Properties tab is Chroma Key. Check this box, then choose the Eyedropper tool. And you can select a color from the clip to make it transparent. As you can see, that color becomes transparent. You can fine tune the color to be excluded with the color range and denoise sliders. In PowerDirector 18, you can select more than one color to be removed from the image and fine-tune it with color range and denoise as well. That would be great for green screen effects or if I wanted to hide a solid blue sky in a shot so I could put a different sky behind it, for example. Okay, that doesn't apply for this collage. For now, I'll deselect Chroma Key. Next, we can click the border checkbox to add a border to the clip to help it stand out from the background. You can change the thickness of the border by dragging the slider or by entering a specific number in this box. I'll put a 6 in here so you can really see what I'm doing. You can blur the border with this slider. You can also change the border's opacity with this slider. You can also change the border color. Click on the color box to choose a color. It defaults to white, but I'll put a black border on this clip. If you have PowerDirector 17, you're limited to one color for your border. In PowerDirector 18, you can choose up to four colors on the border. By default, the border is a single color but you can use this pull-down box to make the border a two-color or four-color gradient, where you can pick the two or four colors to use in the border. I'll set the border with a four-color gradient of blue, green, red, and black, so you can see how that looks. 
Okay, it's very colorful but pretty obnoxious. I did that on purpose so you could easily see the effect. This feature does have value though. Imagine you're placing a clip on top of a background that is graduated vertically from dark to light. You could set the border to graduate from light to dark so its colors continually contrast with the background. For now, I'll take it back to a single color black. And let's change the size to 2. You can also add a drop shadow to your clip by clicking the shadow box. I'll use the distance slider to make the shadow farther away from the clip so you can see it better. We can make the shadow for the object and the border, for the border only, or for the object only. Let's stick with object and border. I already showed you distance, which adjusts how far the shadow is cast. We can change the blurriness of the shadow. We can change the opacity of the shadow. And we can give it a different color. We can also change the direction of the shadow by clicking around this circle. This is a really neat tool, but I'm going to turn off the drop shadow for our collage now. Next is reflection. You can also add a reflection to your image. You can change the opacity of the reflection and how far the reflection appears from the clip. Flip does just that. It lets you flip an image upside down or left to right. This is useful for action camera or phone video, perhaps. The next feature is 3D. The manual says, once enabled, use the slider to set the amount of depth you want the PIP media to have in 3D. Dragging the slider left will make the 3D PIP object seem nearer to the audience, in the foreground, while dragging it right will make it appear farther away, in the background. I think this is basically a setting that's used for 3D video, and I don't do that, so we'll just move on from that. Fades is next. I'm going to talk about fades later in this tutorial, so let's skip that for now. That covers the options on the Properties tab. Now I'll drag the clip all the way down to the bottom left corner. I like to leave a little space from the edges, so I'll hit the up arrow key on my keyboard five times and the right arrow key on my keyboard five times. We're done with this clip, so I'll hit OK. The PIP designer closes and we return to the timeline. Let's add another clip to our collage. This clip shows a ride at the fair. I'll drag it down to the third row and drop it beneath the other clips. You can see the new clip covers the other two in the preview window. You can also see it's much longer than the other two clips. I could trim the third clip so that it's the same length as the others. Instead, I'm going to speed it up. The faster it plays, the shorter the clip is. I'll hold my control key and drag the right end of the clip in. You can see the cursor has changed as I do this. I'll drag the end of the clip back to the end of the other clips. Now the entire clip will display as a time lapse where everything is sped up. Let's open the PIP designer for the third clip. We could go through the designer menu as we did before. You can also open the PIP designer simply by double clicking on the clip. Here we are back in the PIP designer. Let's modify this clip just like we did the other. In the size box, I'll change the 1.000 to 0 0.335. Click on the next box and the clip resizes proportionately. We can scroll down to the border option and select that. Now we can change the border size to 2. Then change the color from white to black. We're done formatting the clip. Now let's position it. This time we'll drag it down to the bottom right corner. I like to give it a little space, so I up arrow five times and left arrow five times. We're done, so I click the OK button. Now you can see we've added two PIP clips to our scene. 
I'll increase our view to fit. Hit stop to make sure the cursor is at the start of the clip and hit play so you can see it working. See how simple the PIP designer is? If you do nothing more than what I've shown you in this episode, you'll have a wide variety of options to format your picture-in-picture -picture clips. In part two of this tutorial, I'll demonstrate some more advanced PIP capabilities, including motion, changes to scale and opacity, and integration with the mask designer for cropped PIP scenes. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen, you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Thanks for watching.